God to man to creature. She is now starring as Letty Lewis in the HBO series Lovecraft Country. But let me just give y'all a little bit of background. I mentioned earlier she has made so many television appearances, including we got to go way back to 1994-95 on our own full house. I even seen her in the episode of Martin when Martin was like Santa Claus and Pam and everybody. Gina was Mrs. Claus and they was all coming through. She was in The Great Debate as The Temptations Confession of a Marriage Counselor, Friday Night Lights, True Blood. Um, she appeared in The Underground. She's won three NCN AAACP Image Awards in 2018. She was cast as DC Comics superheroine Black Canary in the DC Extended Universe, making her first appearance in Birds of Prey. Her other films include Roll Bounce, The Gridiron Gang, The Great Man. I mean, it just goes on and on and on and on. And not only that, she's fly outside of work because she's active in the community just in terms of causes with HIV and AIDS. She has done so much. And then Tracy G. Citizens, Tell me. Here's the thing. She's the board of directors for the Children's Defense Fund, which just had me like, oh my gosh, yes, which make it even more reason why she's family and we all cousins related to her <laughs> and Jesse and Jazz. And Je we love the entire family. Citizens, give her <laughs> a big round of applause. We love our cousin, Journey Smollett. Uh, Journey, what's up, woo! girl? Oh my hey, Journey. Gosh, my dad. Oh, Come on, thank through. you. Come on, girl. We love you. Look, <laughs> Journey, I, I was telling everybody earlier today that you, you've you been trending on Twitter. And, you know, it's just certain names that, that just, like, get me triggered. As soon as I see somebody, like, trending that we love and care about or we know, like, I automatic, like, I know they ain't coming for so-and-so. You better be easy. My Twitter fingers <laughs> is on go. I, I'm about to get busy if necessary and start blocking people. But um, Lovecraft <laughs> Country, everybody was talking about your work, and people were saying, oh, my gosh, this is scary, this is spooky. But uh, <laughs> Joni Smollett is my girl, so I'm rocking. Oh, my gosh, Lovecraft Country, what is this about? This is crazy, this right. is eerie, this is weird. But, oh, my gosh, Journey Smollett is so fly, and she's killing it. I have to support wow. it. And then I follow Nikki Nelms on social, and I always yeah. see her posting your beautiful pictures and different things you guys are working uh, on. So I just want to yeah, say yeah. big up and love to you. And just it's just a credit to everything that you've been wow. doing and, and, and rocking. And you just got to start off by letting us know how you got involved in Love Craft Country. Wow. Well, for one, thank you for this welcome. I mean, I feel the love, family. I feel the love so hard. And I, I don't take it lightly, you know. Um, thank you. You know. For real, I mean, it's, uh, I really, really appreciate it. And, and I feel such love, too. Like you said on social media, I was live tweeting, and my goodness, I just, on Sunday and, you know, every Sunday, the past three Sundays, it's been amazing to see how the art is affecting people and how they love and love Craft Country and Letty and Atticus yeah. and Uncle George, <laughs> you know. Um, I got involved underground, um, was the show Misha Green and I yeah. did for two seasons. Misha Green created it, co-created it with Joe Pekowski. And then when it got canceled, I was, you know, she and I, the entire cast, we were so bummed, right? Mm -hmm. And she was trying to find a home for season three. And in the midst of that, she passed me the script that she had just written called Lovecraft Country. I was aware of her working on it. But she just kind of casually passed it to me, you know, like, you know, hey, take a look at what I'm working on type of thing. She wasn't offering it to me. Mm -hmm. She was actively still trying to find a home for underground season three. Yeah, yeah. And when I, when I read it, one, it made me miss her writing. Cause mm -hmm. you know, I'd been fielding a few offers on other TV shows, but nothing compared to what I experienced with her, you know, the kind of the level of text that she mm -hmm. creates. And then two, the second Letty's introduced and the way she's introduced, I was like, wait, who is she? And <laughs> I have to play this role. Like, what is Misha doing? Does she not realize that there's literally no one else on this earth who can play this role like me? <laughs> and <laughs> I, I mean, I lost sleep about it for months. Like, the anxiety that I felt 
was so rare, but it was more so this connection I felt to Letty. You know, it was it, it was this visceral connection I felt to her um, on a molecular level where wow. as an artist, you just you just know that, no, your spirit has to be a part of bringing her story mm-hmm. to light, you know, mm-hmm. um, and this defiant, this disruptor, this woman, you know, in search of her tribe, in search of her community, and a woman who just refuses to let society erase her dignity, you know, mm. um, she's in 1955 as a black female, she's fighting the patriarchy and white supremacy, you know, um, and just the way Misha was choosing to tell this overall story, you know, it's this big genre piece and yet he really deconstructs that classic genre of sci-fi and horror and reimagines it in such a radical way by centering black voices in the middle of it. So mm-hmm. I was just like, I, I don't know what I have to do, but I have to be a part of this project. <laughs> I, was in, <laughs> I was in JJ Abrams office months later after reading the script and she still hadn't mentioned it to me. And he just kind of said casually, hey, did you read Love God Country? And I was like, yeah, man, oh, my gosh, it's amazing. Misha's so incredible. And he says, you should do it. And I'm like, dude, I think I should do it, too. Right. What is he doing? <laughs> like, you know, and he just casually says, you should do it. And I'm like, dude, you do not need to convince me that I need to do <laughs> like I know that. And so a few weeks later, Misha just casually calls me and says, hey, so we just, hired this dope director, Yann Demond. I need you to go meet with him. Bye! <laughs> then right. <they> the <laughs> so then, Journey, so then how did um, Jordan Peele get involved in all of this? Well, Misha and Jordan were involved uh, from the beginning. Got they, it. Uh, okay. Uh, both, you know, they. I think collectively, collectively they, they got the rights to the book, Matt Ruff's book, Lovecraft Country. Right. And Love, then okay. they they went out to JJ and then HBO got attached and, and stuff like that. So they were, they were partners on it from the beginning. From the very beginning. Well, I opened up the phone lines early just in case people wanted to just say hi early and talk to you. And immediately we started getting phone calls. So I'm just going to jump right in and Tracy, I'm going to get to you in a sec as well, but I'm going to let Michelle mm-hmm. from North Carolina say hello to journey. Hey, Michelle, how you doing? Hey, Michelle. Yeah, hey, how y'all doing? Hey, Michelle. Doing great. Say hello to journey. Hey, Dirty, how you doing? I'm good. How you doing, Michelle? Good. I just want to say hey, and um, I was uh, I had the opportunity to do background work with you on that show, and I'm just wow. want to say I'm proud of you. And I also want to wow. say since we got a period, I always wanted to say that to you. You always want to say what? <laughs> since we got a period. You're, you're from Eve's value. Since we got a period. I always wanted to say that to you. But doing background hey. work, you know, you can't speak with you and everything. And I was just, like, amazed to just be, being able to see you in person and meet you and just want to tell you thank you for all the work you do. Thank you. Thank you for the love. I don't think Yo. you like Hey, Journey, ain't you cracking up how Michelle held it all together? Michelle was like, I'm here working. I want to say this line to her, but I ain't going to mess up and get fired on my little background job. So I'm going to just wait. Listen. What the- <laughs> I mean the, the professionalism of that you Michelle. Come through, Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> you nice strategy. <laughs> yes, I love it, Michelle. You keep doing what you're doing, and you keep um, you hanging in there, and keep doing your work. I mean, this is a role. I mean, Journey is casually mentioning Misha and J.J. Abrams, but she didn't just land in these places. This is over years and years of career and work, so it's not mm-hmm. easy to do. And she's just at the point now where she can say these names on the first name basis but this is not easy we got Roland on the line from Sacramento what's up Roland say hello to Journey Smollett hey Roland yeah, good morning this, good morning this is Roland I just want to say uh, oh sorry morning. Roland hey, top of the morning hey thank you thank you thank you and uh, Journey I just want to say I'm a big fan of your work and um, I just had like two questions first of all um, what do you find to be uh, do you find yourself ever typecast at as you get older in this business, even though you're a very young woman, and um, and also, what what was your favorite role that you played? So mm. um, thank you for the questions. Yeah, you know, I I find I've found more so not that I've struggled to be typecast. I've found I've struggled to work against stereotypes um, mm. in this industry. You know, the the writers 
in this industry. Unfortunately, the creators and filmmakers, not many of them are people of color or, you know, women of any kind, you know, and so I've struggled to, to not contribute to the degradation of the black female body, to not contribute to the stereotype of who we are as black people in America, to not be cast as like, you know, the best friend who's killed on page 37 in a horror film, you know? Um, and, and so it's been hard. I've had to have a lot of patience, you know, and um, because as an artist, you want to work, but you, I've, I've you right. know, through the training of my mother was raised to be like, no, it's a craft, it's a skill, it's an art, you don't just do anything. So that was my main right. struggle. You know, it's why my resume is not, I mean, it's it's long in the length of years because I've worked literally since I was 10 months old, but it's right. not, it's not 50 pages long. Like I don't, I don't have a huge like resume um, because there's been periods where I just couldn't find work because it was like, well, I don't want to contribute to the stereotypes. You know, wow. um, we got a lot of work to do in the industry because we need more Misha Greens, we need more Ava DuVernay, more Gina Prince Bythewood, you know, more, more people like Jordan Peele, more people like J.J. Abrams who right. are like, yo, I want to champion these stories, you know. Um, and and yeah, what was your favorite so. role, um, Journey? Because I know Roland asked that as well. What's what uh, been your favorite so far? Obviously, Letty, you killing that, but what else did you love to do? You know, it's I'm a Libra, so it's hard for me to give you a favor. Indecisive. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> but I, I I love them all for different reasons. They bring out different parts of me, and I get to explore different worlds. You know, um, I'm so privileged to be able to 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 be an actor, to tell stories. You know, the art of storytelling is such is so essential. I believe to humanity you know i think we have such a profound need to witness acted out representation you know and a a profound need to live in this safe space where we can explore these real extremities right in this in this in the comfort of of these fantasies and so um i'm so encouraged because you know i'm excited about what's to come and and the, the projects i'm trying to shepherd along as a producer the projects i'm about to take on as an actor, you know, I'm, I'm just incredibly excited about what is in store. I, I don't really look to the past and say, oh, this was my, right. you know, I feel like I've only just begun, you know. Mm-hmm. So I'm, right. I'm excited for my next role that I'm about to jump into, Absolutely. you know. Mm-hmm. Well, Thank we you love so you and keep doing what you're doing. Thank we you for the too, love, Mom. really. Yes. Thank you All for right. that. Tracy mm-hmm. G, go ahead and jump in there. Citizens, yeah. uh, Journey Smollett is joining us, 888-742-3345. If you have a question or a comment, she's here to talk about love, craft, country. Tracy, jump in there, though. Hey, Journey. Merry September. I'm so happy that you are able hey. to join us, my dear. Yes, and I love hearing how you truly live up to your name when you're talking about how you're always looking forward to the next project and not settling on the destination you already arrived at in the past. So you're truly on a journey (laughs) thank you you. my question for you my dear is um in this current project i noticed that the antagonists they say certain lines that make sense but in the context are very manipulative such as Mm. um and i'm gonna be paraphrasing it but you know um kind of everything is how it's supposed to be, right? Which is kind of just Mm -hmm. about acceptance. And that can also come from like a Buddhist philosophy of sorts. Um, Another line about how even if you don't want to be here, you're supposed to be here, right? And so Mm. these lines, depending on who's saying it, depending on the environment, can be truthful. But then when it comes Mm. to Lovecraft, you see how manipulative they are, you know? And so Mm. in your Mm. own life, with that in mind, I'm wondering what truths did you have at a time in your life that you realized you had to unlearn? Ooh, ooh. You try to you try to get me to go inward this morning. <laughs> That's what I be doing, girl. <laughs> okay, I see you. Yep. Um, Let's do it. I think uh, I, I'm interestingly enough in such a, a time of transition in my life. You know, of shedding so much and so many people, unfortunately, and it's been such a collective time of grief 
me individually, but also collectively as we experience in our nation and the world and our community, right? Um, I am unlearning um, a few things. I think one, you know, this time and period, it's hard for me to say goodbye, right? You know, it's hard for me to let go of things that don't serve me or to let go of people that, you know, are, um, you know, um, obstacles or roadblocks. Um, I think, you know, I love hard. My whole family does. Like, that's just who we are. My mom has a big heart. She takes in strangers off the street, literally, growing up. She would take someone in who was a cancer patient and give them my bed and, like, force Mm -hmm. us to, like, nurse them back to health. Um, I am realizing that um, being a server, which we naturally are, because my mother is naturally a server, my grandmother was a server, um, it can sometimes get weaponized against you. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, and how to protect that, how to guard that, um, how to not, you know, be used to the point where you just suck dry and you got no more left to give. I'm learning to enforce boundaries in my life, which is hard for me. It's hard for yeah. a lot of my family members, honestly, um, because, again, my mother's such a natural server. So that's how we grew up being is like you 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 take in this or you, right. you you strap this on your back and you just are like, yo, I can soldier through it. And yet at the end of the day, you're not taking care of yourself. You're not putting the, the necessary boundaries up to protect yourself. Um, mm-hmm. So I, I think, you know, um, I'm kind of, yeah, I'm kind of unlearning or I'm kind of learning the balance between service and self-care. Yes. Dope. Mm-hmm. Dope. That's amazing because I wanted to jump into Journey um, and talk with you about family versus industry, if you will, which is kind of interesting for you because your family, you guys are all so talented in your own right um, and and, and y'all do so much stuff. Um, And I know as siblings, sometimes things could be, you know, you crazy, you home, you got to share, you fight, you this one threw a a ball at me, this one didn't, you go through all of that stuff as siblings. But then Mm -hmm. how do you, do you ever feel like, competitiveness or how do you deal with the competitiveness then in the industry because they all tell us as artists you know what oh if you didn't get the job or if you didn't get the part it wasn't for you it wasn't for this it wasn't for that um your time will come and all these different things that people say to you to make you feel better about certain things but how do you process that how do you deal with all of that in terms of competitiveness um in the industry you know Again, I bring it back to my mother, and because I grew up in this industry, you know, there's certain tools that she instilled within me that are are timeless and just get me through. You know, one mm-hmm. of them being mm-hmm. that competition is an illusion. Like there is no one mm-hmm. like you, right? right. Um, and God created you with your own unique thumbprint. And so, um, what is meant for you can't no man or woman get in the way of, you know, and sometimes in life, I've seen it so many times, there'll be something that I so desperately want a role or a project or an opportunity or something like that. And then you years later, see how, if that would have happened, that that (laughs) window being open would have closed this other door. Amen. Okay. And so you just have to have an insane amount of faith and insane amount of trust that what is meant for you is meant for you. And mm-hmm. can't no person get in the way of the calling God has on your life. And that I trust so firmly when I tell you there was another project I was supposed to do instead of underground. If I would have mm-hmm. taken on that project and look, it ended up being a pretty, a fairly successful project, but if I would have taken on that project, I would have never met Misha Green. We'd have never done two seasons of Underground. And I'd have never been able to play Letty on Lovecraft Country. I love that. You know Word. what I'm saying? And so, like, the notion of that is so humbling to me. And so I just keep coming back to the fact that there's a bigger calling on my life and that you just trust the path God has on you. And a wise man told me, first and foremost, ignore everybody. Okay? Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, just ignore them. And just do you. Just walk on your path. And so that's that's something I meditate on and I'm constantly challenged in it. It's a constant walk, yeah. walk, you know, a constant practice, right? Like you got to just continuously exercise that muscle, but it is a philosophy I come back to continuously. 
Thank mm-hmm. you so much for sharing that. And I asked her that, citizens, because guess what? What Journey said applies to every area in life. You don't have to be in this mm-hmm. industry to use that tool, to practice that, to understand that. You know, competition is mm-hmm. literally an illusion. You don't have to, I, and I think the same thing, or, and we're all human though, right? Sometimes you'd be like, dang, man, I wanted to get that. Mm-hmm. Or I wanted to do that. Like you just, you live with these things sometimes, but you can't let it, keep you from not being present and understanding that God is working on you and molding you and preparing you Mm -hmm. for where he really Mm -hmm. is leading you to go. So just be aware of your past and continue to walk in your greatness. We absolutely love you, Journey. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Thank you for taking time out this morning to call into the show. Citizens, y'all keep watching. Love craft country our girl is on there rock with her support her and follow her on social media journey where can they reach you i actually a lot of time on instagram and twitter and on both of them i'm i'm just journey smollett you know so it's easy to find me and that's J-U, y'all. J-U-R-N-E-E. Yeah. That's all that. <laughs> I mean, child, if my mother was not original enough, she had to go and spell my name different. It's like. <laughs> I love it. I love it all, oh, man. We love you, Journey. Call anytime. I love y'all, Come too. by anytime. Thank we you. appreciate you. Thank you.